Call of Chill is back, and I'm so excited to review this series. It's one of my favorite reality series on television. Um, I think it's such a powerful and impactful show and really is one of the rare shows that showcases uh, celebrities in a different light. You know, they are not just brought on to, you know, just for entertainment purposes that this is about education and this is about impact. So always really great to see this series. Uh, season three has uh, Tamar Braxton, uh, Angela White, also known as Black China, uh, Saucy Santana, uh, Claudia Jordan, Carlos Miller, and Nick Young. And so, you know, they got these six, uh, you know, charismatic, you know, some would say, you know, controversial uh, celebrities to, you know, join this show and be a part of this HBCU experience. And so it's really exciting to see that. Um, you know, of course, the series is created by Tracy Edmonds, who we know has been in the entertainment industry for a long time. She is the one who um, conceived of the original College Hill series when it started in New Orleans, Louisiana. Um, that uh, back then it was just college students who were taking a part of it. Uh, but, you know, Tracy Edmonds is a woman who does, um, you know, work with a purpose. And, you know, she was married to Babyface, and she was engaged to Deion Sanders, so she's like, you know, a fixture of Black Hollywood and the Black entertainment industry, but she really uses her powers for good, as I like to think. Um, so it's exciting to see that, you know, this show is um, continuing to be successful, and she has taken it from Texas Southern with the Celebrity Edition to Alabama State. Now it's at Xavier University, uh, the nation's only Black um, Catholic institution, a uh, historically black college, which is known for, you know, producing, you know, so many black doctors and so many black scientists. Um, so I think it's great to see the show head to Louisiana, head to New Orleans and head to Xavier. So, um, shout out to Tracy Edmonds for continuing to do the amazing work that she does. Um, and so, uh, just to recap, the show and what happened in the early, you know, the first two episodes. Um, the first thing that you see is just like how potent the culture of New Orleans is. Um, having lived in New Orleans for a year, I can attest to the fact that like it is a place like no other place in the country, if not the world. And so I'm um, just really excited to see them tie in the Mardi Gras culture um, and just like the New Orleans culture in general. So it's great to see that. The first person in the house um, is Saucy Santana, and he is coming in hot. He is turned up. Um, you know, he has on his velour little sweatsuit, and he's coming in and checking out the house and seeing what's going on. Um, and, of course, you know, as all of these reality TV shows does, he's trying to pick out the best room first. Um, because there's six people this time, there seems to be even rooms. I know that's been a tension in the past. Uh, but he's definitely, you know, the first one in the house and he is someone to watch. Um, next in the house is Black China or Angela White, who we know, you know, as like the ultimate video vixen and, you know, one of the top black exotic dancers in the country. Um, I think she was, you know, she dated Tyga and she was associated with him and he had a child together. Um, and she also has, you know, a child from Ralph Kardashian. So, you know, Angela White is that girl, has been that girl, but most importantly, um, if you've been following the news and following, you know, her, she is on a spiritual journey. She is in the midst of a transformation, you know, as in as a personality who lived in the fast lane and who lived the fast life of sex, drug, drugs, money, rock and roll. Um, you know, she is finding that, you know, that can be um, an empty way to live. It's a lot of fun, but it's an empty way to live. And so Really excited to see Black China or Angela White and what she does this season. She's on a sobriety journey. She is, you know, a born again Christian. Um, it's just really exciting to see what she will take out of this HBCU experience and take out of this show because um, this show does have a, a big impact on these celebrities who come on it. Um, as you've seen on previous seasons, there is a transformation. Um, next into the house is Carlos Miller. He's a comedian. Um, I didn't know that he was associated with Wild and Out and that, you know, there was like an issue there. Um, and then he's also part of the 85 South show, which is like one of the most popular 
comedic shows on YouTube or one of those podcast type shows. So he's definitely, you know, imprinted into the comedic world and he's a funny guy. He got a lot of charisma, but he's also, you know, he's a smart guy. He got some, um, you know, intelligence to him as well. Uh, next in the house is Nick Young, basketball player for the Lakers and the Warriors. Um, he's known for this iconic, this iconic meme, you know, if you type in like shaking my head or what the heck, his face will pop up with a lot of question marks around it. Um, he attended USC, but he left that institution early. Um, so he has his purpose is to like get a part of the HBCU experience, but also to, you know, finish up his college experience. Uh, Claudia Jordan comes into the house. She's an actress. She's a producer. Um, you may have known her from Real Housewives of Atlanta. She went head to head with Dee Dee in a couple of scenes that are very iconic. Uh, but she's also all over YouTube. You know, Claudia is a hustler. She's an entrepreneur. Um, she's a go-getter. And so she has a couple of shows on Fox. So really good to see Claudia. I really like Claudia. I like her story. Um, I like her presence in the industry. So I'm um, exciting to see uh, what she does. Randomly, like all of the women have on pink. I don't know if they all got the same memo or whatever, but that's something that's funny. Um, and then, uh, next up is Tamar, who is the last one. She comes in like last, taking the best for last. She comes in her all black. She has like 15 pieces of luggage. She has her support team there. Um, but Tamar comes from a family that has attended a lot of HBCUs. So, um, excited to see her take advantage of this journey. Her family has a, a, a long history with Bowie State University. Um, and so she talks about, you know, her life as a backup singer for her sister and then becoming a solo star and then becoming a star of reality TV. Um, and so show is off to a good start. Um, you know, I really like, you know, seeing the guys, you know, be comfortable with Saucy Santana, you know, because those guys are secure in their masculinity. They ain't, they're not like, you know, acting weird about it. Um, they even take Saucy's bags to the room and, you know, everyone divides the rooms up. There's a little scene, a little tension there, but they work through it. Um, but, you know, just overall excited to see them on the campus of Xavier University. They get this fantastic HBCU welcome. The band is there. The choir is there. The cheerleading team is there. Liturgical dancers are there. Like, they are rolling out the red carpet in a way that only a HBCU can. They are getting a full HBCU effect. It is truly a different world. You know, Claudia is taken aback by it. Uh, Angela White is taken aback by it. Um, Carlos Miller, Saucy Santana, who is a little upset, he comes late. Um, but they are really taking advantage of it. It's really nice to see. Um, you really get a preview of Black China's journey. Um, they go to a couple of classes, a philosophy class, um, a political science class. And the political science class, things get tense, they get heated. Um, because they have to do this paper where they address homelessness from a policy perspective. Um, and there's just a lot of different opinions, but that's college for you. You know, college is the place to debate ideas. There is no right or wrong answer. I mean, there are right or wrong answers, but it is a place where, you know, you can share diverse perspectives. And so, um, you know, that leads to some deep conversations that I'll kind of explore as I go through each person and just kind of like talk about, you know, um, you know, what they bring to the show, what they're going to get out of the show, you know, and their journey thus far on the show. Uh, so first up, Saucy Santana, again, you know, confident, charismatic, so much swag, you know, making a huge name for himself as an LGBT person in the hip hop industry, you know, starting out as a makeup artist in Tallahassee, associated with FAMU in Florida State, um, and then, you know, working with the city girls. But, you know, he never went to college. He says he wanted to get into the game as soon as he graduated from high school. And so it's just great to see, you know, somebody that's a hustler, somebody that's an entrepreneur that really chased and achieved their dreams. Um, and, you know, Saucy is a, um, a firecracker inside of the house, you know, just so full of life and so funny and fun, um, and very dramatic. It's so funny to see someone with so much confidence. Uh, with such sensitive feelings and you'll see a lot of, see a lot of scenes throughout the first two episodes of Saucy, you know, just being in his feelings because he's getting left and thinking, you know, that he's like, you know, the prima donna of the group. Um, but I'm hoping that he takes a lot out of his journey. Um, because, you know, the HBCU experience has something for everyone. Uh, so really excited to see where Saucy goes on his journey. And then, like I said, Angela White, who those who have followed her career, 
you know, followed her. No, you know, she has been in the midst of a spiritual transformation, just leaving the emptiness of the entertainment industry behind to lead a life with more purpose. And, you know, I'll admit, I thought that, you know, it was a gimmick. I thought that it was just like something, another thing that she was doing. But um, I would say her presence on the show and her spirit is one of the most powerful things so far on the show. Um, she is really vulnerable throughout this show. Um, and it's just great to see someone, you know, really opening up and being honest about what they're going through. Um, in a couple of the scenes when she's in the classes, the philosophy class, but in particular the media class, you know, they have this um, prompt to talk about, you know, how they are perceived and how that perception is um, incorrect. And so, you know, she is someone who has seen a lot of negative headlines about herself. And, you know, it is, it's, it's a tough exercise for her in that class. You know, Saucy does a really good job of it with Nick Young. They talk about, you know, uh, Saucy's perception as an LGBT person and Nick's perception as like just a dumb jock and someone who doesn't take anything serious. And then, you know, uh, Carlos and, um, I think Tamar, they have a really impactful one where Tamar is seen as an angry black woman. Uh, but, you know, Angela can't bring herself to go on stage because it's just bringing up so many emotions for her. Um, and so, again, I hope that she sticks it through. I hope that she gets a lot of us out of this. She is so beautiful. Um, and, you know, it's just great to see her in this setting on reality TV. So I'm really rooting for her and excited to see, you know, where her journey goes on the show. Carlos, the comedian, you know, as a comedian, if you think of the historic role of the court jester, provocative, you know, saying things that other people won't say, that is the energy that he is bringing. Um, you can tell he's a very astute dude, very smart dude, uh, because he definitely keys into like the history of Xavier University, you know, how they, you know, uh, you know, break records for pipelining black doctors and black scientists and, you know, how they are Catholic HBCU. Like he knows all of that great information about HBCUs and the HBCU experience because he's a comedian and comedians perform at HBCUs all the time. So, um, it's great to see him in the cast, but, you know, he is that dude that is like, um, challenging the way that everyone else sees things. So in the episode, uh, the end of the first episode, beginning of the second episode, they're in that policy, that political science class, and they are really, you know, having a serious debate and, and going back and forth about, you know, what is the, how do you address homelessness? And is it the, the, the responsibility of the government or is it the responsibility of the individual? So it's almost like this conservative perspective versus this liberal perspective. And like, how do you solve this issue? And so he's getting into it with Tamar, with Claudia, with Nick. <laughs> and Nick, you know, brother, um, which Nick shares. And I'll talk about that a little later. Like, this is personal for Nick. Uh, but, you know, Carlos is bringing up some good points in the sense that, like, money can be rerouted from other places, from playing the lottery, from property taxes, from income taxes, or different ways to fund you know, the issue of homelessness. And so he's bringing up really great points, um, but he's just not, it's not what he's saying, it's how he's saying it's coming across as very combative, which I think is fine. Like, you know, the collegiate setting is the place to debate ideas. And again, this is why I think this reality show is so powerful and so important because you get to see black entertainers in a different light grappling with, you know, pressing social and political issues so really excited to see more from him this season. Um, you know, he's a practical joker. He's a prankster. He's a comedian. And, you know, he's controversial. So he is definitely, you know, bringing the heat. Um, he's just a great, you know, addition to the cast. And he brings a great perspective. You know, Nick Young, basketball player, Lakers, Warriors, you know, you can just think of him as like that entertain industry dude, you know, that athlete you know, the dumb jock stereotype, but, you know, he's coming across as like a really, really cool guy, um, just bringing a really cool masculine energy to the house, which I think all of the athletes so far have done. Lamar Odom in season one, um, Iman Shumpert in season two. Like, I love that Tracy is casting these ball players, um, these basketball players, these athletes, because they do bring a unique perspective and a unique 
um, point of view to the cast. Um, you know, the black athlete is such a, a powerful and pivotal role in our society. And I think, you know, we overlook what they bring and what they can contribute. He wants to be a basketball coach. So I know his scenes with the basketball team are going to be really powerful every season when those uh, professional athletes, former professional athletes are able to really tap in with those young aspiring athletes on these HBCU campuses. This is something different about it when, you know, you're working with your own people um, and you are fellowshipping with your own people. And so Nick, you know, of course, is like trying to keep the peace in the house. You know, he's trying to calm down Sasha Santana. He's trying to keep things calm inside the classroom. But, you know, don't mistake his calm, you know, laid back demeanor for being a pushover because he's definitely a passionate dude. And he's opening up a lot. He's being very vulnerable as well, like him and um, Angela White, Black China. They're being very vulnerable. Tamar, Claudia Jordan, um, because even in that political science class, he's talking about the fact that he lost a loved one who was suffering with addiction and mental health issues. And while like this issue is personal for him, this is something that he, his family has, you know, grappled with and he has grappled with and he has a foundation. So I'm excited to learn more about that as well. Uh, Claudia Jordan is the second to last and I'm just glad to see Claudia Jordan in this setting. Um, she is, you know, she attended college, but she says, you know, like, there were only like 50 black people on her campus. So for her to be able to be embedded in this HBCU experience, um, I think it means a lot to her. I think it means a lot for her. And I could totally see, you know, Claudia having been like a, you know, a campus queen or an SGA president or something. Cause Claudia is just like, she just has such a great personality. She's such a businesswoman. Um, she's such a hustler. And so just really excited to see Claudia. Um, loved her on Real Housewives of Atlanta. I love her on Fox Soul, everything that she's doing there. Um, and she's kind of like the mother of the house. She brings like this, you know, mature energy, like really appreciate this opportunity. Um, and she's, you know, bringing up really great things in the class and unpacking her own, um, you know, identity as an entertainer, as a celebrity. Um, she has some really powerful things to say in the media class and in the philosophy class. So, Really loving Claudia Jordan thus far. Um, she does, you know, kind of play a little prank on another cast day, and that leads to some tension. So we're going to see how that unfolds. Um, I don't think she meant any harm by it. I think it was just like a little, a little practical joke, but you know, we're going to see how that goes. But I am loving Claudia Jordan on the cast, and I honestly hope to see her do more work with HBCUs. I think she is a, a person and a personality who could do more, um, and really have some lasting impact. And then last up, last but not least, is Tamar Braxton, who we know from the Braxton family, the little sister of Tony Braxton, who she's saying back up for um, before, you know, embarking on her solo career, but really making a name for herself um, on the Braxton family values, which I think was either on WeTV or Lifetime, um, and just being a breakout star on that series and you know, really becoming an iconic reality TV personality. Um, but, you know, that has come with its pitfalls. You know, Tamar has been very transparent about, you know, the way the public perceives her as spoiled, you know, as a brat, as an angry black woman, as, you know, having an attitude, um, you know, so I'm glad that she's on here because the HBCU legacy is near and dear to her heart. Her siblings all attended HBCU, Boy State University, um, and so she's ready for her turn, for her chance, um, and she's certainly making the most out of this opportunity. She has some powerful scenes with Black China in terms of just being vulnerable and open and, you know, grappling with your identity as an entertainer. Um, and, you know, Tamar is also someone of deep faith, so she can connect with Angela White, Black China on that level as well. Um, liking what Tamar has to say in class, especially in the political science class, like she pushes back against, you know, the perspective of Carlos Miller. Um, and so it's just great to see Tamar back on cast. She is another, you know, great addition to this cast. So shout out to Tracy. Edmonds for bringing this cast together. Shout out to this cast.